A warm greeting, today is Monday, April 1, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In today's video, I would like to talk about the most recent run of the global model CANCEPs regarding the 2024 hurricane season, specifically in the Atlantic Ocean Basin. Additionally, at the end of the video, we will be providing a preview of what the forecast will be that the University of Colorado will be releasing on April 4. We will be sharing some images that scientist Philip Klotzbach has been publishing, which give us an idea of what the forecast will be that will be shared on April 4. Let's begin by looking at this animation, where the changes in ocean temperature anomalies are shown. You can see that the CANCEPS model, like the other models, continues to forecast that the La Nina phenomenon will be developing for the summer and will be present during the peak of the season. Remember that the La Nina phenomenon creates very favorable conditions for the formation of tropical cyclones in the Atlantic, specifically because it reduces the wind shear that typically moves over the Caribbean region. On the other hand, we also see that the model continues to project that over the next six months, the North Atlantic will continue to have surface ocean temperature anomalies above normal. And although it seems that these anomalies will not be as extreme as those we have seen in recent weeks, there are two factors that I would like to discuss that concern us in this image. First, as we approach the Caribbean region, notice that for the months of August, September, and October, during the peak of the season, the CANCEPS model continues to project that the Caribbean Sea region and just east of the Lesser Antilles will be extremely warm. As you know, this can mean greater energy available for cyclones to form and strengthen rapidly. This distribution of temperature anomalies for the peak of the season is definitely something that concerns us greatly. Secondly, I wanted you to see the equatorial region of the Atlantic, where the CANCEPS model is projecting what we know as the Atlantic Niño. Here, equatorial waters can warm more than usual, and this can lead to the formation of stronger cyclones between the Caribbean and Africa. This is something that meteorologist Andy Hazelton has been sharing, where a study found that when the equatorial region of the tropical Atlantic is warmer than usual, it often results in an increase in the frequency of major hurricanes. Specifically, between the Caribbean and Africa is where the greatest formation of intense cyclones is seen during years when we have what we know as the Atlantic Niño phenomenon. Additionally, notice that when we have the development of La Niña, cyclonic activity also increases. This is seen just east of the Caribbean and in the central and western regions of the Caribbean. If this year we have La Niña in the Pacific and the Atlantic Niño phenomenon, this combination could result in even more cyclonic activity. This is shown in this image, where years with La Niña in the Pacific and the Atlantic Niño simultaneously for the hurricane season are compared. Definitely, this combination can be very dangerous for the Atlantic region and the Caribbean Sea. In response to this, the CANCEPS model also projects below normal pressures across the tropical Atlantic and the Caribbean. This could leave more favorable conditions for the formation of tropical cyclones. As if that weren't enough, this model also shows us that there may be higher pressure anomalies associated with the Azores High and the Bermuda High. This could also favor the trajectory of cyclones more westward compared to what we have seen in recent years. This would definitely represent a greater risk for the southeastern United States, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean Sea. It's not surprising to see that the precipitation anomalies projection from the CANCEPS model continues to show a fairly active tropical Atlantic, and quite southerly in response to the Atlantic Niño phenomenon. More importantly, look at the Caribbean Sea region where the strongest precipitation anomalies above normal are being displayed. This may be associated with more favorable conditions for the formation and strengthening of tropical cyclones. This is definitely something that concerns us, particularly for the Caribbean Sea region. And although this is the projection of a single model, remember that all global models continue to project these conditions, and we are already two months away from the season. In fact, on Thursday April 4 in the morning, the University of Colorado will be releasing its forecast for this hurricane season. We suspect it will probably be one of the most aggressive forecasts we've seen from this group of scientists. As a prelude, they have been sharing three images. The first one is as follows, showing that the Niño phenomenon continues to weaken in the eastern Pacific region. And that we may possibly have the development of La Niña for the months of August, September, and October. Just as NOAA is projecting where there is more than an 80% chance that we will have La Niña for the peak of the season. The other image they were sharing is of ocean surface temperature anomalies. You can see that the subtropical Atlantic region, the tropical Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico are all experiencing temperatures well above normal. Over the next few weeks, we will continue to analyze the different forecasts that will be coming out. Remember, there are two months left until the start of the season, and it seems it will be a very active one for the Caribbean Sea and the Atlantic. The important thing is always to be prepared, so I invite you to have your preparations ready just before the start of the season. Remember that here at Hurricane Info, 
we will continue with our commitment to bring you the latest information related to cyclones in the Atlantic and the Eastern Pacific regions. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking the red button below the video that says subscribe. Then click on the bell icon to receive notifications when we upload new videos. Don't forget to share the video so it reaches more people. So, it will be until the end of this week when I record a new video to discuss the University of Colorado's forecast. Goodbye.